So now I want to use loops to be able to read data. So I'm, it's the same process that I was doing before. I'll want to count the number of rows and use that instead of explicitly stating how many loops to make. And I'll want to count the number of columns and use that instead of explicitly stating how many loops to make. So uh, to do that, we need to declare the variables and uh, populate them. It'll look like this. So I've just simply declared the variables, no, no problem there. Uh, and this is going to be the total number of columns I have and the total number of rows that I have. And I'm populating them a little bit differently. I'm going to use current region this time. And remember, current region finds the data, and then it goes from the, the top left to the bottom right. And it finds bottom right by looking for a complete blank column and a complete blank row. So if I'm just missing one uh, cell of data here or there, uh, it doesn't mess up my count. So it's a pretty good way to do it. So once I find the current region, then columns count and rows count. And I've set watches for my end calls and in rows. And let me check them to see uh, if this is working, if it's finding them. It's found three columns of data, which is correct. And it's found four rows of data, which is correct. Now, I don't want one of the rows. I don't want this upper row, which is the header. So I can just minus one. And now if I run through it, it's finding three columns of data and three rows of data. Then I can change this. Remember, this is my column loop. So I can change this to end calls. And I can change this to end rows. So now I should see it start here at A2 because I'm starting in A1. Uh, and I'm going to offset uh, one row, no columns. So it should go here and loop down and continue looping. So let's watch it. And noticed it looped this extra column. So it's counting three columns, but I only need two because my offset would be no offset columns, one offset column, two offset column. So I'm also going to need to subtract one off my column count. So now let's watch it. Excellent, so it's finding my data uh, and it's working uh, working correctly with the with the cells. So now I can move on to do what I would actually like to do. I would like to read A2, A3, A4, add them all together, and then write it in A5, write the sum in A5. Then I would like to come over and add up the Bs and write the B sum and the Cs and write the C sum. So I just created a variable, row sum, to hold that counter. It's just going to be a counter for us. And then I set it row sum is equal to the row sum plus the offset value. So it's going to start off zero and add 99 to it. And then it will be populated as 99. Uh, I'm sorry, then the new, the new value will be 99 plus 92. And then I can write that out. Now a couple of things. So I need to set this row sum to zero every time I enter a new column. So I can do that right here. So on my first column loop, I want to set row sum equal to zero. So that the first time it counts, it redeclares it zero plus 70, uh, and then 70 uh, redeclares it as 70 plus 99. Then the other thing I want to do after I have went all the way through the row, I want to write it out. So after it's looped through all of the rows, 
Then I want to offset that highest loop value plus one. I want to come down one row. And I want to put that value, the row sum variable. I can also make it bold. Then I'm going to go to the next column. And in that next column, I'm going to set it back to zero. I'm going to go through and add it all up again. And when I'm done running through the rows, uh, then I'm going to write it and set it to true. So there's a lot going on in here. Let's see how much of it works. Looks pretty good. I would want to test this to see if it's counting correctly. And I can just quickly test it like this. So it looks like my counter is working correctly. So here I have a larger data set. Uh, and if I was first presented with this, I would probably make a copy and I would shrink it down to just like three rows and three columns, kind of like we had before. So it's easy to work with our logic and easy to see if it's doing what it's supposed to do. Then once we have it working there, if it's truly flexible, it should scale up and work uh, with a larger data set, no problem. Now this isn't truly that huge, um, but if it were several thousand rows and, and several hundred columns, um, we could expect that it would still work. Uh, so I will run my application that I just wrote uh, to add up these rows, uh, and then I'll have to test it and make sure that it's actually doing what I wanted it to do. Okay, it looks good. It's found all the columns. It's come all the way across. So now let's see. We no longer have a formula in here that we can see, uh, so we're going to have to manually test this. And it looks like it's working correctly. It is. So we can get rid of that. We no longer need our tests. So uh, this application is doing what we expected it to do. Now we've been coming down rows and then moving to the next column, coming down those rows, moving to the next column. Let's try going across columns. So first we're going to go across columns, then we're going to move to another row. Uh, so it's the same problem. We're just looking at it differently. Uh, so our uh, I's and J's will just change. So now my goal is to be able to count all of these columns and write a total out here and then count all of these columns in this row and write a total and then add up this row, all the columns in this row and write a total. So to do that, I've had to switch my way of thinking. So I'm going to start at A1 and I want to offset one row, no columns, one row, one column, one row, two columns, one row, three columns, offset all the way across. And then when I get to the end of that column count, then I want to increment to the next row and offset two rows, no columns, two rows, one columns, two rows, two columns. So I've changed it from row sum to column sum just to keep it clear in my mind. Uh, I'm still counting. I'll work with these minus ones as I need to. I'm still starting in range A1. Uh, but now my larger loop uh, or the, the, the outside loop is the rows. I'm going to change rows less frequently. Inside each one of these rows, I want to change columns frequently. So that's what I've done here. Change J to be the columns. And I'm still just uh, taking redeclaring column sum. So when I go to a new row, I set column sum to zero. And then inside of there, I redeclare it as zero plus whatever this uh, one zero, offset one zero is. I'll redeclare that just like I did before. And when I'm done, I'll write it out. Now, it's going to be really important to use watches here. And I use this to actually narrow in on what my application was doing. So I'm watching all of my variables. And then as I step through it, I can watch it populate. So 14, which is actually correct because my offset uh, zero is here and offset 14 would be here because it starts counting at the next next column. So it's going to count 15 and then minus one makes it 14. The rows are 19. So it actually counts up 
20 rows, but one of them is a header row, so I have to subtract that. It activates that A1, and so now I can watch. And so my column I, I'm right here now, IJ, so rows are equal to one. Column sum is gonna be equal to zero. Now my J is equal to zero. So I'm offsetting one row, no columns. Now I should see column sum increment to 71, and it does. It's gonna to go to the next column. So now my offset is one row, one column. It should be here, 71 plus 53. I'll go to the next J. So I'll watch my I, it's still on one row. My J is on the second column now. One row, two columns. And I can see it move down here also. So when it looks like it's moving correctly, I can stop it and then I can just run it. Things look pretty good. I can test it. And everything looks like it's working correctly. Your main sub always goes at the top and it'll call all of the sub subs in the order that you need them, according to your logic. And there we have it. All the rows are added up, all the columns are added up. So again, this isn't hard, but you really have to pay attention to where you're at, what your offset is doing, and you have to work with a lot of logic, thinking through the problem and how you want uh, things to move. Being able to use these watches are extremely helpful to make sure it's doing what you actually want it to do. And again, if I was presented with something this big, I would probably shrink it way down. to something like this that I could easily work with and quickly work with and easily watch it move to make sure it was doing what I wanted it to do. Once that was working, then I would go back to my bigger data set uh, and get it going there. And I'm always testing uh, to make sure that the numbers I'm getting are what I expected them to be. And again, you can use the watch. If they're not, you can use the watch and see uh, where it's broken.